What if you could ride a jet surfboard you built yourself? This video follows an incredible DIY journey. From shaping foam to crafting carbon fiber into a machine made for speed. All right, first things first, we start with a big old slab of polymeric foam. This will become the board itself. The process starts with shaping the foam using a hot wire cutter. Of course, you can't just wing it. Making sure that the dimensions are just right is crucial. He's got metal sheets laid out to guide the shape. And we're not guessing here, this is all precision work. You can see the board slowly losing its chunky block shape and taking on that sleek shape we all recognize. Bit by bit, it thins out, gets smoother, the edges get rounder. It's starting to look like something that could fly across the water with ease. However, the job's far from done and our board needs a lot more love than that. At the back, there's a cutout for the jet tunnel, where the water jet will push the board forward. It's time to make things durable and sturdy. To make that happen, he first prepares the work surface with a coat of lubrication and resin to make sure that the carbon fiber sheet won't stick unnecessarily. Spreading the coat nice and even, he takes his sweet time with this step as it's quite important and easily overlooked. First going horizontally and then vertically, the resin coat is perfectly laid out on the surface. Now like rolling out dough, he spreads out the carbon fiber sheet evenly. With the sheet laid flat out, it's time for the coating treatment again. The entire carbon fiber sheet is given the same paint job of the resin, which is spread out evenly onto the entire surface of the sheet. Now it's time to move the prepared carbon fiber sheet from the work surface onto the actual board. Our builder uses this large roll to press the sheet smoothly and laps the whole sheet up. Then it's time for the big transfer onto the board. With the same technique, the carbon fiber sheet is laid out onto our wing board. The builder slowly and firmly pushes it down with a roller, using a plastic scraper to clear out any air bubbles or edges. The entire process takes a lot more patience and precision than you'd think. Tediously smoothing out the entire carbon fiber sheet onto the wing board, the builder is left with a clean, sleek board that's significantly stronger and sturdier than before. When it's done, the board has a beautiful, sleek vibe to it that goes along perfectly with its added durability. Giving us a nice close-up from different angles, the builder proudly shows off his beautiful creation that's coming together nicely to eventually become the jet surfboard. Now, to make it smooth and sea ready, he takes what looks like a spinning grinder and buffs the surface of the carbon fiber. It goes from shiny to this dusty gray color as he sands it down. I'd say the build is starting to come together, but we've got a massive problem waiting for us on the technical side of things. Next up, propulsion prep. At the tail end of the board, he installs a hollow cylinder. It's secured with bolts and covered with another carbon fiber piece. Everything's clamped and held in place with some wood blocks and metal tools to keep it snug while it sets. While that dries up, we move towards the other components since there's no time to waste. He grabs a drill that has a constant water flow running. Pretty clever, since the water keeps the bit cool and washes away debris while he shapes a metal mold for a propeller. He cuts out two identical metal molds kind of like a top and bottom bun for what's about to be a carbon fiber sandwich. Before that, he prepares the filling for the molds by whipping out the trusty sheet of carbon fiber. Into these molds, he places small layers of carbon fiber sheets, coating them with resin and glue to make sure they stay in place. He's stacking carbon fiber sheets the way I stack cheese on my sandwiches. Once stacked and sealed, the molds are bolted tight. A syringe and tube are used to inject more resin to fill every little gap because the last thing you want is a propeller with a bunch of holes in it. The result? A smooth, solid propeller that pops out easily thanks to that constant lubrication earlier. The propeller gets a nice round bolt right in between so it can easily be tightened onto the rest of the build. Next up, fins. 
Just like with the propeller, our guy grabs a set of metal molds. One is not enough, and we have to make these even more sturdy. He grabs a second one, mixes up a special glue cocktail, and spreads it evenly across the surface using a wooden stick. Once both fins are coated, he presses them together and tapes them up tightly to hold the form while the glue sets. Now we're getting to the heart of the beast, the engine system. First up, he creates a custom metal housing that's going to serve as the protective shell for the engine. Every weld is done with precision, clean lines, no jagged edges. Once the metalwork is done, it's time to give the engine housing a carbon fiber coat. It's sleek, strong, and stupidly lightweight. First, he carefully measures and cuts the carbon fiber sheets so they fit the contours of the housing like a second skin. To lock it all in, he brings out the heat gun. He smooths it all out, carefully pressing down every crease, folding corners, and trimming off the excess to keep it razor clean. The entire engine housing gets loaded into a pressure chamber. As the vacuum kicks in, the resin gets evenly distributed and pulled deep into every fiber layer and compressing the entire structure into one solid, unified piece. It's finally time to give the engine a permanent home. With the slot carved and ready, it's finally time for the heart transplant. The real power source comes out, the engine. The jet pump, which will suck in and blast out water at high speed, is connected directly to the rear nozzle. And to seal the deal? A custom-fitted carbon fiber hood is crafted to sit over the whole assembly. Now comes the nerve-wracking part, making room for installing the remaining components. The cooling system, exhaust lines, and countless tiny fittings need to be assembled with precision. But then, there's a massive problem with the engine placement. The creator faced a series of engineering challenges while adapting the engine to fit a compact board design. He had to reposition the carburetor, redesign the cooling system with custom lines, and deliberately avoid using a starter motor to keep the profile as flat and streamlined as possible, all in pursuit of performance without bulk. After hours of fine-tuning and head-scratching, the pieces finally start to fall into place. The last of the critical engine components are laid in. Everything, from the exhaust pumps to the mounts, is precisely positioned the exhaust system is slotted in, angled perfectly to vent out the pressure without interfering with the board. With the engine locked down, it's time to lock in everything else. Pumps, pipes, coolant lines, and every piece has to hold its ground when this thing starts. Christian goes over every joint and every seam, tightening bolts and securing mounts. To make sure nothing blows off mid-ride, he clamps down metal rings on the hose connections. Then comes the moment of truth. Christian hauls the finished jet surf to the beach. The product of weeks of relentless engineering and late night metal work. The engine kicks over, pumps start whirring. The entire system is alive, clicking, humming, purring like it knows what's coming next. And here it is, the moment everything's been building toward. One deep breath and then Boom! The engine growls to life, and the jet surf launches forward like it's been waiting for this very moment. Water sprays up in a rooster tail behind him as the board shreds across the surface. It doesn't just ride, it slices through waves with precision, every curve of its design doing exactly what it was designed to do. It's a full-blown missile, a DIY dream turned into reality. <laughs>